The next motif I've got to show you is the Fabulous Flamingo. It's not recommended if you're completely new to Brick Stitch, so if you uh, want to have a go, I would have a look at either our Brick Stitch Primer video that we've got or our Play Your Cards Right um, card suite motifs that are also done in Brick Stitch with a little bit of shaping. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the Flamingo at sort of the widest point of his body so it's a, it's this row here i'm going to start with this row is the same length but this is the row i'm going to start with so i'm going to start by making a ladder stitch row of seven beads i'm then going to work towards his tail and then i'll reposition the needle and i'll work the front half of his chest up his neck and then round his head so i'm using db2116 uh, i'm using db2103 and i'm using db10 you're only going to need um what are you going to need you're going to need seven of the black beads and you're going to need 24 you're going to need about 32 or so of the orange beads so you only need a pinch of each of those two and of course you can substitute them for whatever colors take your fancy so let's get started as i said i'm going to start with a foundation row of seven beads i'm using a pale pink nymo and i've got a size 10 needle and i've got about a meter and a half of thread that i'm working with so I've only left a short tail on this one. That's four, five, six. Seven. So there we go. And then if I show you on the, the actual motif, that's uh, that row there that we've done. So we're just going to decrease down towards the tail of the flamingo. So we'll just reposition the needle under the thread there and we start with two beads and come under the thread and back up and pick up one and add that final bead there so now we want to reposition the needle so that we can um, work up from that point of the, the flamingo out towards his chest so I'm going to come down through that bead there and then I'm actually just going to skip across to the end and come up through those four beads on the end. Okay, so that's four beads added there. So this next row that we're going to add is the start of his neck. So it's this row here on the chart, this row here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up these three beads as normal in brick stitch. We'll add this one as an increase as normal in brick stitch. And then we're going to square stitch these two beads to the end of the row. 
So we'll start with two. sitting properly and we'll pick up a third and then a fourth so this is the increase and then to extend the length of the row we're going to do two beads with square stitch or ladder stitch so this is essentially making a, another foundation row so I'm going to pick up one bead and I'm going to go back through that last bead I did in the same direction as before and back down through the new bead and then pick up a second one and add a second bead to the end of the row there and now what I can do is I can just brick stitch five beads along this row here for the front of the chest Just reposition the needle there. Two for the first stitch. speed there for the front of the chest okay and so there you can see we've got that bit of the flamingo started there so what we're going to do is we're going to reposition the needle to add the neck so we're just going to work up and down through these beads also reinforces the chest which is no bad thing so that we're going to come out of the first bead that we ladder stitched onto the the extended row here so I'm going to do that now there are four pairs of beads that we're going to add for the neck so we're going to pick up two and now we're going to go down oops into that bead on the end there and up through the next one along and we're going to do that three more times so we're going to pick up two come down on the right up on the left and it doesn't matter if you work this the other way around as long as you're consistent in the way that you work the rows so that's two pairs that's three pairs and then that's four pairs Okay, and now to reinforce this neck, we're just going to come all the way down through that first row to the front of the chest and all the way back up the second row. So there you can see we're now at this point on the chart just here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up these two beads and then we're going to square stitch three beads across the end and then we'll come back and work this row and then again we'll reinforce these stitches here and then we'll work the head so 
So as before, pick up two and go through. Come back up and back down. And then we're going to add another three beads using ladder stitch or square stitch. So that's one. and three so there we've now got five beads in a row so I'm just going to brick stitch another row along the the back of the neck there so we'll pick up two, come through, just make sure that's sitting square, and we pick up One under there, and again, this is a little bit wobbly because it's essentially a first, first row of beads. So just take your time and persuade it into position, shall we say? See, that's through the five there. So that's a row of four, and now we're going to reposition the needle again, and. I'm going to come down through here and what I'm going to do because this is sitting a little bit loose I'm actually going to come down into that bead there and I'm going to find the thread bridge that's sitting underneath so I'm coming in from behind and through there and then I'm going to work back up into that one we should find that that's going to pull a little bit tighter. There we go. And then down. And up. And then in through the top bead on the end here. And down into the second one. Not the one on the end. And now we're going to do another brick stitch. So we're going to pick up two. And we're going to go under that thread there and then we're going to come back out the one that's going to sit at the top and that will pull them so that it sits in the right place for where we want the head and we're going to do a row of three so two to start with Now this next row is quite exciting because we're going to pick up a different colour bead. We're going to add the eye to this row here. So we'll start with two pink. Go under the thread. Try not to pull it too tightly this time. And then we'll add a black bead for the eye. And then we'll add another pink one for the top of the head. So then we'll do a decrease row in pink across the front here. And now we'll start on the beak. So we're going to start 
I'm picking up two orange beads for this row. And we'll actually go, we'll do a turn. So we'll come in through this orange bead here. We can't come at, go back in this one because that's the one we've just attached. So we'll go in, we'll go into the pink bead on the row below through the next pink bead along and back out through that orange bead at the bottom of the beak there. And then if we pick up the two orange beads and go under the thread, they should sit where I expected them to. There we go. So we'll come back up through that one. And then we're going to go down through this um, orange, the, the lower of the orange ones, and then we're going to attach the black tip to the beak, like so. And that is our first flamingo plaque made. Now, this flamingo is double thickness, which gives it the stability that it's going to need to be uh, a hanging pendant. So I've gone ahead and made a second flamingo plaque ahead of time. So this one is the second one. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a second black bead to the tip of the beak. And I shall show you why in just a minute. And just make sure that's nice and secure. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sew these two flamingos together. So I'm just going to bring the needle up so that we're coming out at the top of the head because it's easy to start the attachment at the top of the head. So we're going to put them back to back like so. And then we're going to square stitch around the edges of, to join the plaques together. So we're going to come through the one at the back back into the one at the front and back out again and down into the next bead and then sew those two together and the next two two there so that brings us back to the front of the beak and then what I'm going to do there is we're going to go down through the next orange one on that bit of the beak there out through the black on the tip and then we're going to join the two tips of the beak together. So you've got the longer beak and the shorter beak. And just square stitch those together. Okay, now you can see the pink thread there on the end of the black beads. If that bothers you, just get a permanent marker pen and colour the thread in. It's not really very noticeable, so you should be okay with it. Okay, well now what we're going to do is we're going to come through this black bead here and we're going to come up. Now you don't have to stitch under the um, this bead here under the chin together, but I would suggest you do the one that's in, the, in line with the eye. This is a little bit fiddly. Because obviously you've got the rest of the body flopping, flopping around there and come up. And if you can get in, do the next bead back along the head. And then we're going to reposition to do the neck. So just make sure your thread's not getting caught around any 
edges where you don't want it to and come out through the first bead of the row in the neck and again we're going to attach it to this one on the back to find the corresponding bead this might be a little bit tight because we've already reinforced the neck and you will find you have to keep turning your work over and back so that you can go through the, the right bead The front of the neck and then when you work down the chest you're going to come into this bead move that tight out of the way up through the next one across the body and into the opposite side. So this is like a lacing technique. And up and across. And up and across. And then we're going to come down the front of the body so again just work from side to side stitching everything together Track of which direction I'm going in that way, and when you get to the front of the body here, or the bottom of the body, sorry, then you're just going to leave that thread hanging because we're going to use this thread and that keeper thread, that tail thread there. We're going to use those two threads to attach the legs. So we'll come back up to this head, or this bead at the top of the head. This is the, sorry, this is the tail from the uh, other flamingo plaque. And now we're just going to stitch across the head, back of the head. If you wanted to have this hanging from a pendant, now would be the point to attach a soldered jump ring. So get your solder jump ring and pass your needle and thread through it two or three times going through the bead at the, the, the top of the head just to connect it nice and firmly. Um, if you haven't got a solder jump ring um, which doesn't have a, a join in it for your thread to slip out then if you use a spot of either clear nail varnish or PVA glue on the split in a jump ring and make sure it's as firmly closed as you can as you can make it then that will do the same uh, the same job but you might find over time that you need to just put another spot of nail varnish or pva glue on just to reinforce the split because obviously as it gets worn that will um will wear off so just coming down through these beads I've pulled them a little bit tight it's quite difficult to get the needle and thread down there we go and join there and then across the back of his neck You might find some of these beads are starting to get quite full of thread. So if that's the case, just switch down to a, a finer needle. So a size 12 needle, um, which will go through because you don't want to force your needle through because you don't want to break any threads. 
So the back of the neck, the front of the neck's already connected, so you don't need to worry about connecting the back of the neck together. Um, so you can just come down through the beads here. Oops. And then we'll do across the back of the body and round to the bottom. One thing you can do is when you've got this joined up to about this point is you can drop a size six seed bead inside. Whoop. It's not going to stay, obviously, because I've not stitched round far enough, but just inside there. And what that will do is it will just give the, the body of the flamingo a slight dome to it. It's ever so slight. It's not a lot. Um, but it just gives you bod your flamingo body a bit of body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to stitch around here in the same way you've just seen me do. So square stitch paths all the way around, lace the the uh, across the tail and then come down so that I've got all the threads at the front. And then I shall be back to show you how to give your flamingo some legs. I finished sewing the flamingo together and uh, now it's time to add the legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by adding the straight leg here and this one is coming out of the thread that's on the front um, face of the beadwork as we're looking at it. So I'm going to pick up 12 beads, 11, 12, slide those up towards the body and then I'm going to leave aside the last bead that we've just put on and I'm going to pick up all of the other beads again. I'm going to come through those so that we're coming out of the top. And I'm going to go back into that body, the point of the body, in the same direction as before. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to have enough thread there to do the, re the other leg with, so I'm just going to weave that thread up and away. But I'm not going to finish it off just yet. I'm just going to move it out of the way. And then I'm going to have a look and see what other threads I've got there and I can see that one is actually the one that I left from the other body plaque and that's hanging when I stitched the front half together and that's coming out of the the back plaque as I'm looking at it here and it's coming out pointing to the right so it's in the opposite direction to the previous leg which is what we want so I'm just going to add my needle to the thread and what we're going to do now is we're going to pick up six beads six of the leg color here three four five six bring those down and now i'm going to miss miss the last bead and i'm going to go back through just the one before that and that's going to make the the knee joint there Okay, I'm now going to I'm now going to pick up four beads. Two, three, four, and I'm going to find the fifth bead that's hanging down on the first leg. So one, two, three, four, five, and I'm just going to pass straight through that bead like that. Okay, and that will draw these beads up into a triangle, like so. And then I'm going to pick up another two beads for the, the front of the foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and leave aside the last bead I've picked up, go through the next one, and then this fifth bead... I'm going to go through it so that these beads sit square. So I've come in the top and out the bottom on this side. So I'm going to do it the same this side. So I'm going to go in the top and out the bottom of just that fifth bead there. And then I'm going to go back up through the rest of those beads on that leg till I get to the 
the knee joint. I'm going to ignore those two beads on the end and I'm going to come back through those beads, those four beads, back into the body of the flamingo. And that is our flamingo leg made. So you might just need to give it a bit of a, a poke to make sure that it sits in the right direction. Now what you can do is you can go through all those beads a second time and reinforce them if you need to. So you'll just need to reposition the needle so that it, you're coming out with that bead in the right direction. Like so, and go through them all a second time. But again, just avoid that knee joint and that'll just make it a really sharp point. So, We'll go through there. And sorry, I've got my finger in the way. Down and through and back again. Okay. So I will go back through. And I'll reinforce the second leg and finish off the thread ends. And that will be my flamingo ready to go. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we're going to bring all of the elements together and make a fabulously fantastic necklace. Thank you.